All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another Buffalo Sports Center video. I am Don. With me today is the co-founder of our Instagram, Cal, and we have a very, very special guest with us, uh, UB kicker on the football team, Mr. Alex McNulty. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, how are you doing today? Doing good? Doing good. Yeah. Got some early morning bowling in with Cole Snyder. <laughs> hey cole snyder good to, good to hear that name as well oh yeah oh that, that, he's a good guy yeah um but we got a great day ready for us um let's get it off how was last season for you was it good it was good it was, it was a season that i i knew i could have and i was glad to finally put it together and have a full season where i was performing the way i wanted to yeah, you you were you had some serious kicks in there. Uh, the team was still pretty good. You guys got that bowl win. How did it feel to get that bowl win versus um, uh, well, with right right at the end of that season there? Yeah, it was nice. It was especially fun playing Kyle Van Trees, and you know, he was with the team for so long, and to have a chance to play him and uh, win against him was big, especially back in the Camellia Bowl where he played for us a couple years before. So it was fun. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah, you talk about Kyle Van Trees. Um, you know, obviously he had a whole funky situation with the Bulls. You know, punter and QB. Um, you know, having him in that special teams area and being you know the leader of the team, and then all of a sudden switching, and you guys finally get to beat him. Was that more of like a rivalry game for you, or just kind of like a friendly matchup? It was just kind of fun. He, we, we would always joke. We called the specialists on our team the birds. And we would always joke he was like a, uh, an honorary bird for that one season because he was punt, helping punt, punt when Evan got hurt. So it was kind of a, a fun situation where we kind of got a little closer with him just having him join the punts pre-practice and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that that was also that's fun to watch. And um, you, you mentioned the injury there. That happened, I believe, during the Penn State game um, a few yeah, seasons that was ago. Penn State, I believe Journey Brown was the one that ran through through his leg. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was rough. It really, really threw us in for a a roller coaster that season as far as special teams goes. Because mm -hmm. Evan yeah, was kind of like the the leader at that point with special teams. He kind of had the most experience, had done had a good like leadership behind him and good mentality. So we were kind of following his lead, and then when he went down, it kind of threw things in for a little bit of a roller coaster. Oh, yeah. yeah, you guys were in that game too. That was that was definitely a fun game to watch on TV. I remember watching it thinking. Man, they got a real shot to win this. But that injury happens, and it starts yeah. to go downhill a little bit. But one of the uh, one of the best moments was was when Penn State got booed off in the first half because yeah. we, we scored late to go take the lead before halftime. Yeah, uh, that was, yeah, that's that was the first time I really watched you guys out there because I, I it's stupid. We never get your games on on local television. You have to go searching in like the four hundred five hundred channels yeah. for it. It's, it's or you gotta have the ESPN Plus subscription. Oh yeah, boy. we don't we don't even <laughs> want to talk about ESPN Plus here. Uh, we don't we don't like them too much. But you mentioned uh, that you finally got some consistent kicking going on this past season. What do you think? What did you change before your last season here compared to your first three seasons? I say the big the big thing was my preparation as far as having less kicks at practice so that when I got to the game, I felt fresher. Whereas in previous years, we were kicking four or five days a week. I'd get to the game and I'd feel tired, almost like I have to just get through it because mm -hmm. I'm feeling like not 100%. Whereas this year, I'd kick twice a week, Wednesdays and Fridays for a Saturday game. I'd get to the game, I'd feel fresh, ready to go, excited to play. And that was definitely one of the biggest things that helped me. And then two, just maturing in how I'm on the sideline during a game where I'm not kicking as much into the net, keeping fresh, keeping my sitting sitting down and kind of like separating myself from the emotions of the game and not letting those dictate how I'm performing and just settling into like a very consistent mindset of next kick, got to go out there and make it. Yeah, absolutely. And um, this past year for the team, you guys went seven and six, so a bit more uneven. But if you were to get take any like top takeaways from the season, what would you say? I'd say we really, really kept all the games pretty close going into the fourth quarter, and we fought pretty hard as a team to win those close games. Sometimes we'd we'd be a little undisciplined or have a couple mistakes on the team that resulted in us losing, but we never 
tried to like blame certain people for our mistakes. We tried to take it as a team and I think we can carry that into next season. We've got the experience in those close games. We had a lot of returners in big key point areas. So if we can carry that into next season and then help bring the new guys that we have transferring in and the freshmen that are joining the team, and we can carry that through and really have a, a, a solid season, win the MAC, take a bigger bowl game possibly. That's what our goals are going into this next season. That yeah. would be great to see. Um, <clears throat> from a coaching standpoint, I know you guys do have Coach Mo now. Um, from the outside, I hear he's a big energy guy. I know he just got the the contract extension there. What are you, what are your thoughts on him, just as a coach and an overall person? He's a big energy guy, like you've heard. I also really like how adaptable and like willing to learn he is. He knows that he's a younger head coach and isn't set in his ways 100%. He's willing to listen to the players and kind of take feedback from us as far as what we think the team needs to start growing and move forward. He doesn't just get stuck in like a rhythm and just say, okay, this is how we have to do it. Like he's willing to listen, especially in the off season to kind of make those changes and help improve us for the next season. That's so funny that's you bring that, that up really too. Like. Funny you bring that up too, because, you know, as Buffalo people, we talk about the bills quite a bit too. And that's one of the issues we're starting to have watching the bills. It seems the coaches are kind of stuck in their ways. We're not changing. So that is good to see in the UB football program that you guys do have some flexibility there. Um, you mentioned your last season. I just want to bring up some of these stats because this is a phenomenal year. I mean, a 54, a 54 yarder, um, which is, I, I believe, a best in the nation. That you know, that's that's something to uh, be definitely uh, proud of. Um, you look, you get, you had all MAC first team. You know, a, a great honor there. And um, you were a finalist for a few awards. And then 2022 MAC Special Teams Player of the Year. How does that feel to have that under your belt? It was good. I feel like it, felt, it gave me like more confidence going into next year. And it felt good to just finally do, like I knew I could earn that. Like I knew I had the talent and the ability to, to go out there and, and win those awards. And it wasn't about the awards. It was more about helping the team and making the kicks so that we were put in a place to win games. But it felt good to get that, that acknowledgement and know that like I have the ability to be the best in the Mac and possibly in the country if I can keep up with the the – how I performed last year. Yeah, and I mean, you set, you set a franchise record too. I believe it was 24 field goals last season, which you know, no one's ever done that before at UB. So, you know, more things to come next season and hopefully, you know, those numbers keep going up. Yeah, and one thing that I really like too with Coach Mo is he really trusts me to put me out there for a lot of kicks and we'll go out there for kicks. Like the one against Toledo, first drive of the game, he throws me out there for a 57. And I, I was mad. I missed it just right. Practically skimmed the outside of the upright. But just have him having that trust in me gives me more confidence to go out there and make the next kick and just take advantage of all the opportunities that he's given me. Yeah. For sure. And you see you see so much like throughout like college, the college level and you know, other leagues that are popping up, the XFL, the CFL, the USFL. Um you know, kickers sometimes just, you know, you look and you're like, oh, that's so easy. Like, how are these guys missing kicks? Like, you know, you'll see guys miss extra points on a regular basis in some of the, the secondary leagues. Um, Like, ex just explain, like, how hard is it to truly kick a field goal? Because I feel like so many people think it's just so easy and everyone can do it. I'd say the, the hard part of kicking a field goal isn't the physical job. Like, everyone that's in college can go out there and make a single field goal. Like, that's not the hard part physically you can do it it's going out there when you know you only got one chance you don't have a redo you've got the pressure of everyone looking at you and if you mess up you know that they're gonna scold you and yell at you and call you names and all that stuff so it's kind of shutting that out and being able to not worry about if you make it or miss it but worrying about when you go out there what is my job what do i have to do take your steps properly align yourself towards the uprights and make the kick. Try not to overthink it and not let distractions get into your head and mess up with your form and stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah. And, you know, it seems like the mental part of kicking is a really big challenge for a lot of guys. <clears throat> My voice is dying there. But um, for you in the past couple of seasons, do you think you were there – totally mentally in order to make some of these big kicks that you were making this past year? I'd say I, I felt good under pressure 
like the year before I had some big pressure kicks where I had the the 55 yarder to send us into overtime against Northern Illinois. And we had the game winner against Ohio and stuff like that. So I felt like under pressure and the big kicks, like I felt focused and ready to go. It was more so on the kicks that had less pressure that I felt like I was getting in my head more. And that those were the ones that I was missing because I was almost like too casual about it. Whereas like I, I wasn't as focused as I needed to be on the process. And that was a big step going into this year is keeping that same focus throughout the entire game, not just on like the bigger kicks or on the deeper kicks and stuff like that, but trying to, even on the ones that first quarter kick first drive of the game, like that kick could be a difference maker in the fourth quarter and still having that same focus on all of the kicks. Yeah. And um, I'm sure it's probably easier when you have a very, close bond with your long snapper and your holder would you say you guys would have that close bond on ub last season yeah with uh evan davis <clears throat> and jackson balter i've known them since they came on the team 2019 and we we all use the same kicking coach and adam tanowski so we go to those camps together we worked for him on staff a com- couple times for some of his cap- camps so we're definitely pretty close. We hang out a lot in the locker room. Our lockers are all next to each other. And we we trust and we're able to communicate with each other, like how we can help each other grow and become better. And that definitely helps. Um, and also, on campus at UB, do you get any shtick for when you say that you're a football player and people ask what position do you play? Do you get shtick for saying that you're a kicker? <laughs> Um, <laughs> not, not too often. I'm sure in the back of their head, they're like, oh, he's just a kicker. I feel like, but it was funny one time, sometimes before games, we'll go to like elementary schools and we'll like give like high fives to all the kids and stuff like that. And sometimes this last season, a couple of them were asking, oh, like what position are you? And, uh, me and Veneri were next to each other. He's like punter. And I said kicker. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, almost like, oh, that doesn't mean anything. It was funny. Yeah, we're going to have to start up that petition. Kickers are people, too. Back up. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, the ironic part is the kickers are making, you know, more than half the points on the field most, um, you know, most games. So, you, know, you you may think of it as, you know, a secondary position, but, but you know, the most pressure comes on. Um, I just wanted to throw things back to, you know, you, you, went to, you went to high school in Rochester. So, for you personally, are you, like, a, a fan of Buffalo sports in general, or are you kind of, you know, all over the place where you, with your fandoms? <laughs> I was never really like super allegiant to any teams. I just enjoyed watching games and certain players. I did used to follow the Sabres pretty closely when Ryan Miller was on the team because I played goalie in hockey. So I was a I was a big fan of Ryan Miller. Um, but like the Bills and stuff, I was never super allegiant. My girlfriend, her parents have season tickets and she's brought me to a, a few games the last couple of years. So in that, I, they've slowly started to convert me into a Bills fan. They got me a Tyler Bass jersey. <laughs> and uh so, so i'm slowly being turned into bill's mafia there you but, go <laughs> well, that's, uh, and that's i went good. to a bandits game last night that was pretty fun yeah, yeah well big we're, one. we were yeah watching that right before we went on for a sabers live stream last night and they i was watching a little bit of that bandits <laughs> overtime that looked like a fun game oh yeah it was fun the, the crowd's electric you got music playing the whole time it's, those are just good good times to to go and watch now um would you say that you're more of a Bandits fan now, like compare the Bandits, Sabers, and Bills. Where would you have to stack them up with each other? Let's let's get this going here. I'll put I'll put the Bills on top now, and then I'll take the Bandits and Sabers pretty close together. Mm-hmm. Sabers are tough to watch yeah. sometimes, but they've, they've got some <laughs> yeah. stretches where they're they're fun. <laughs> yeah, they, they're a little hey, they're a little better this year. They're not yeah, so they've bad. Had some good stretches, especially when they wear the the goat head. Oh yeah. yeah. The goat Makes them feel evil, they have said. So hopefully that, that stays <laughs> true and they can wear them in the playoffs. But you, you did mention you played goalie um, in, in hockey when you were growing up. Uh, did you ever think, you know, going up through middle school, high school, that you were like gonna, going to be like a collegiate kicker? Was that ever like a dream of yours or did it just kind of develop in high school? It kind of it kind of happened out of nowhere. So I was our sophomore year, our one gym teacher would just kind of let us do what we wanted to. We'd throw some footballs and basketballs and soccer balls out on the field and just kind of say, pick a sport, go have some fun. And I would, the one time I grabbed the kick, the football, set it up on a tee and I started hitting like 50, 55 yard field goals. And then from there, they're like, Oh, you want to play football next year? So I thought (laughs) about it over the summer. I met my kicking coach, Adam Tanowski. He brought me to a couple camps. And then from there, 
I started kicking my junior year and the rest was history. I got my preferred walk on to Buffalo and then got the scholarship the next year and it's been been a fun ride. Yeah, and you mentioned there that you got that walk-on offer from UB. Were there any other colleges in that whole selection process, or was it just UB all the way? So, yeah, I, I had been talking to a couple other schools. Uh, Cornell, I did my first camp at, and they gave me like a, a walk-on offer because they can't do scholarships in the Ivy. And then I had a preferred walk-on to Maryland as well, but... Um, I wasn't going to risk not getting a scholarship there and paying the out-of-state tuition. That would have been brutal. Yeah, <laughs> it can be uh, pretty bad. So in the end, you mentioned uh, the scholarship not necessarily being there from Maryland. What put UB over like Cornell? Um, with UB, I really liked uh, the coaching staff and like the the way that they like uh, introduced me to the program and how they kind of taught me told me things would be going like Mitchison was there and he was on his last year of eligibility and they're they kind of told me the idea is for this year your red shirt year just kind of learn the ways learn some things from Mitch and then as we transition into the next year the goal would be for me to start and get the scholarship which ended up happening so it wasn't like a for sure thing but it was kind of like as long as I don't mess it up I've got a chance to get a scholarship my second year, whereas other schools were kind of like, you could get it, you could not, but there's no like timetable or like planned yeah. way for it to happen. Of course. Um, and you mentioned your uh, predecessor there, Mitch. Uh, what did you think you learned from him uh, as you were redshirting? Um, I would say I learned kind of, he was very good at just kind of like not caring and like moving on from the misses that he had and not letting them like affect his ne next kick. Mm -hmm. So kind of learning to just kind of, if you have a bad game to move on, look towards the next game and the next kicks. Don't let those like bog you down and turn the rest of the season into a crap season. Well, that's, 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 that's yeah. pretty good to have that mental <laughs> side like, there. I feel like that's like a, a huge, you know, aspect of a kicker that they have to have just, you know, forget about it, move on to the next one. Cause you even see that at the NFL level, some of these guys they miss two kicks in a row, and all of a season, all of a sudden, their season's just completely gone. You know, these guys—it's yeah. a short leash for kickers too in the NFL, and probably even in the collegiate level, where you miss a few kicks, and all of a sudden, you're killing your team, and somebody's got to replace you. So, you know, having that ability just to forget about it, go out there, make the next kick—that's huge. Yeah, it can—it can definitely be tough, especially when you get into a rut of two or three misses in a short period to trust yourself because now you're going out there and you got doubts in your mind of, okay, what am I doing wrong? How can I fix it? Instead of just going out there and be like, okay, those kicks didn't matter. That wasn't who I am as a kicker and going out there and just trusting yourself in the next kick. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, well, so you've been at UB for a couple of years. Do you know post UB what your future may look like? Are you going to continue kicking or maybe try to, not go turn pro or you could turn pro what what are you thinking there so I've, I've been talking with my kicking coach about like options to go pro and he has like a pre-draft group that he he trains with um after like their last season so i've talked with him about joining that group after this season and really giving it giving it a shot to see what i can do if i can go pro play in the nfl anything like that mm -hmm. and take his take as much advantage to just play football as long as I can it's it'd be an honor to be able to make money just playing a game <laughs> yeah yeah that's the dream that is the dream for sure and you know in this day and age there's so many different leagues too even if you know the NFL doesn't work out there are other options would you be open to going say you know there's not an option in the NFL would you be open to going to Canada playing the CFL or maybe the XFL because these leagues are getting big TV deals I mean that's there's golden opportunities even if you go to one of those leagues you could end up in the nfl the very next season yeah I, I think it'd be a lot of fun to just play anywhere that i can and take that opportunity to keep playing a little longer because once it's gone it's hard to go back to it so yeah don't try to don't try to leave anything don't try to walk away from it before it's it's too soon mm -hmm. you live one life right 
you got to take yeah. advantage of it. Um, so during your youth, you mentioned you played hockey. What other sports did you play outside of uh, football and hockey? Because I also played hockey. I'm kind of curious to see. Yeah, so <laughs> the big ones were I played soccer, hockey, and track um, growing up. And then football kind of came in late. And I still do track um, with the university. I throw javelin on the track team. Mm-hmm. And I have since I was a freshman. So, well, that's gonna be but nice. I also played like other sports, like I would do swimming and baseball, but not as seriously. Um, so, yeah. Well, what, what, I just what, always liked having something to do. Yeah. What position did you play in soccer? Uh... It depends what team. High school, <laughs> I played striker. Um, my one club team, I played like center back slash midfield, kind of depending on what you needed. And then as a kid, I played a little bit of goalie too especially in like the penalty like if we get into like penalty shootouts i would jump in as the goalie oh yeah so <laughs> all those positions lots of running that's why i avoided anything down the middle there stick me to the outside i just want to sit there and do you know do a tobo every five minutes or so <laughs> um but yeah, I, I played two years of soccer and i was always the goalie you know, uh, <laughs> you know chubby little kid you know did not want to run a lot that was that was always the move but I wanted to touch on, you know, just the college atmosphere. I mean, there's there's nothing quite like college football. Where's like, what was your favorite away stadium that you went to? Just, you know, crowd, the facility overall, like, because you guys get to travel a ton playing college football. So like, what was, yeah. what was just the best atmosphere? I would say Penn State by far. I mean, it was incredible there. There was, I think, 102,000 or so people there. And they're all in unison. They're, they're cheering together. It's electric you can barely hear your own thoughts but it was a lot of fun especially when we were we were up on them it was just that was that was probably especially the first half that was one of the best experiences and then it kind of once evan got hurt and we started giving up more points it started to go downhill but the beginning of that game i'll never forget just how electric and exciting it was to be there of course yeah and would you say that ub has a good football atmosphere as well I'd say we, we start off the season usually pretty good. Student First game of the year, student section's pretty good. We always have the faithful in the, the season ticket section. But as it gets cold and windy <laughs> and snowy, it nasty. definitely starts to dwindle down, and you have to rely more on your teammates for a little bit of that energy. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. well, I'd say home opener is usually, usually one of the best games as far as crowd goes. Yeah, nothing beats that buffalo snow, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the main issues I have for sure because, you know, you look at the Bills and football is everything in Buffalo, right? Then you have a college that, you know, it, it's a little north of Buffalo um, and it just seems like, you know, once you get to that midway point of the season, it's just, you know, the, the fan atmosphere is just not really there. I mean, I think we got to really improve that. Do um, you think if the, if the campus is a little closer to central downtown, would that help at all? Or do you think it's just overall weather and the fact that it's not pro football? I think it's a it's a combination of the weather and just the Bills kind of rule in, in Buffalo. Everyone's focused on the Bills. And even like when we were having the really good season back in 2018, when we only had the two losses during the regular season, like the crowds were better, but they still dwindled as the season went on. Like mm-hmm. we had the one really big game with when we played Army yeah. where there was like 20,000 people in the stands and then – Maction starts and you have the weekday games and people just aren't going to make it out to a seven o'clock weekday game when they got work the next day. Mm-hmm. So I think that the Maxions help for our TV deals, but they definitely hurt like the, yeah. the fan atmosphere at the games because it's hard to get a bunch of people like we go to away games in Maction too and it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. The crowds are a little empty. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe it's just because of uh, Mac not being up there with the Big Ten or something. Just yeah. just do it, pull a... That's, that's definitely part of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I know for me personally, if it's like a Tuesday night, 7 o'clock game, I'll, I'll you know, fathom maybe going to it, but then, oh, the game's on ESPN 2 or something, so then I will just tune in the TV, so yeah. that does make it's sense. Much, it's much easier for, like, it gets us off of ESPN Plus and gets mm-hmm. us onto the more more uh, mainstream networks with ESPN 2 and occasionally just regular ESPN, but it definitely the, those midweek games. It's it hard be. for fans to make it out there. Yeah, and you know it, it is what it is. And same thing like the students, they got tests or exams and classes yeah. in the morning. I know for me that wouldn't. 
be a factor because I go to bed anyways yeah. at like two a.m. But Dude, uh, it's like the earlier games that they can they can go to and then go off and party after the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, well, that's maybe or maybe not what we do down here, but um, <laughs> it's it's not that different here in Pennsylvania. I don't know how it is for you, Kale, at uh, your college, but yeah. yeah well, I, I go to Buff State, and the, the football program this season went zero and seventeen. I did not watch a single minute of it, but. Uh, yeah, def- definitely not not one of the things we really care about at all. But uh, yeah, if I if I were to go to a local football game, it would definitely be UB. But. Yeah, for sure. I I've been to a couple of games in the past before your time, though, Alex. But uh, as a little kid, my parents would take me. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't um I don't I don't know like necessarily what it's like in a locker room like. Usually with last year's team, was it a rowdy locker room or was it more quiet, introverted kind of vibe? I'd say like pregame, people are like headphones on, trying to get in their their headspace to prepare for the game. And then once coach starts calling people up and you get like a little bit closer towards game time, you'll get a little bit of rowdiness going around, people trying to get the energy up. Mm -hmm. Uh, Halftime is more so business trying to make corrections make sure that people are locked in and not if we're up a bunch not trying to like go rela- get too relaxed and let the team come back on us and then uh when we are down trying to forget about the score and try to make the corrections so that we can come out playing harder and make the comeback yeah for sure and um if you were to pick probably when you guys are not making corrections or any of that other stuff, who would be the rowdiest teammate of yours in that locker room? <laughs> I'd say uh, Max Michelle probably brings the most energy mm-hmm. that I've ever seen out of anybody. He's just a little bit wild with it, but he, he keeps it controlled and tries to tries to get the get the energy of the team up a little bit. Um, he's dealt with some injuries in the last couple of years that have, have made it hard sometimes for him, but he's always trying his best to bring positive energy and get the team hyped and ready to go. Yeah. Where, where do you think you stand? Are you on the more energetic side or quiet? I'm definitely quieter. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm more reserved off to the side, especially on game day, trying to, to stay focused. Yeah. Uh, the rowdiness can become a little bit of a distraction for me sometimes. So mm-hmm. as a kicker, uh, you have to be a little bit more, calm and level-headed not let the emotions get to you affect you um can't ride the waves of the high highs and lows of the game yeah absolutely yeah. just gotta stay in your own space cal any uh final questions here uh, I, I will say you know now that we're we kind of shifted gears here you did have a tyler bastards have you ever you know thought of maybe wearing the one eye strip that he does <laughs> when he checks <laughs> no i don't think so i i like keeping it simple not not yeah. uh not a big uh, drip, as they say. <laughs> Not too worried about that. <laughs> okay, uh, my final question for you. Have you ever had, like, a weird pregame routine that you do? Because I know quarterback Josh Allen, he likes to throw up before every game. You Do you throw up before every game or you got something no, else? No, I like, I like to keep it simple. I've got my, <laughs> my pregame, like, snacks and stuff to give me some good energy for the game. Just, like, they have, like, these energy chews that we have in the locker room. Yeah. And then just keeping my warm up pretty consistent. Mm-hmm. That's about I, it. Nothing, nothing too, nothing too exciting or special like that. Yeah, because my my roommate down here, he's on our football team, and he tells me some of their, some of the guys have a little bit strange things that they do before the game. So I don't know if that was the case with you up there in Buffalo, but yeah, I know I know a lot of guys have the the mentality of a look well, play well. So they're they're spending a lot of time in front mm-hmm. of the mirror, getting their getting all their uh, armbands and stuff in the right places, making sure that they're ready to go. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, I'd like to like to keep it simple. Keep it simple. That's right. Well, anyways, thank you so much for joining us here today, um, folks. This is Alex McNulty. Make sure to go support UB football next season. They had a good win in the Camellia Bowl to finish out this last year over Georgia Southern. Um, thank you, Alex, so much for joining us here on Buffalo Sports Center. Um, I was Don. This is Cal, of course, Alex McNulty with us. Um, See you guys in the next video. Peace out.